Hello, my friends. This is Dr. Renee Tucker from Tucker Biokinetic University. Hey, today I wanted to get started by talking about how have we gotten everything wrong? Okay, what I mean by that is we tend to focus on what is the screaming part, what is the main problem, often to the exclusion of looking for why is the problem there in the first place. All right, let me tell you an example. That's hopefully will make things clearer. Um, when I was a kid, I had eczema, which is like a skin itchy red thing. And when I was a kid, all they ever did was take me to the dermatologist and give me more steroids. Sometimes antibiotics, but mostly just steroids. So I thought, well, that's weird. And then when I was in vet school, we did have a whole entire semester of dermatology. And I thought, this is it. This is where the answers are at, right? And... Um, what we do in dermatology, at least in vet school, okay, is we can look at the skin, get some nice um, ideas of what's going on, uh, feel it, see if it's oily or dry, if it's flaky or scabby or looks infected. And, you know, the ultimate test for dermatology is to do a skin biopsy. So I spent an entire semester looking at little slides of biopsies and, you know, memorizing what looks like what. So therefore, I could give you a lot of different diagnoses of skin conditions. This sounds really great. Well, what happens is, no matter what the diagnosis is, the treatment is antibiotics and steroids. It's still the same thing. I was really kind of saddened by this. I thought, who would spend their whole life being a dermatology specialist, which is a lot more schooling after med school, to just prescribe antibiotics and steroids. Okay, I'm sure they have a little bit more tricks up their sleeve nowadays, but in the veterinary world, skin stuff is still quite complicated. Now, why am I saying we're doing this all wrong? Well, what's happened is because there's so many mountains of information out there now, we know so much stuff and you can look up a lot of it just on the internet, that people have had to focus on a particular area like the skin for dermatology, or the eye for ophthalmology. We have very specific mountains of inflammation that people study. So that's what they know, and they know it really well. But the key is, we can't figure out what might be the cause of it if it's not in that little silo of information, if you will. For example, with the skin. The liver is considered a secondary filtering organ. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. <laughs> the liver is a filtering organ. The skin is a secondary filtering organ. So that means that the liver is supposed to filter the blood, get all the toxins out, extra chemicals, filter it, get rid of it. If the liver can't um, do that well enough, it's too busy or overloaded, whatever, then it will filter stuff by sending it out through the skin. Kind of weird, but true. So a lot of times when our horses have skin conditions, then it actually could be a liver problem. So you can certainly do a 30-day herbal liver cleanse if your horse has any skin conditions. That's not going to hurt anything to do a gentle liver cleanse with some herbs. Okay, but that's kind of my point, is that with traditional medicine... Uh, we're really, really good at certain stuff, particularly acute trauma um, for horses like being colicky or having a cut, uh, choke, these type of things. We're really good at that. And for humans, uh, certainly if anyone was in a, a serious car wreck, you want to go to the hospital. This is what we're fantastic at. But this chronic mysterious stuff, not quite so good because I feel we're too focused in our little areas of expertise because no one can know everything. It's kind of overwhelming. But still, you have to find a way to think about the entire system of that whole body. Granted, it is a lot of stuff. But we'll never figure out what's wrong with the skin if we don't figure out why is the skin doing that. And it's often the liver, not the skin at all. Okay, so that's just one example. There's plenty of these, which I'll be talking about in future episodes. But what I really want to encourage you is that we're really figuring this out. 
with alternative medicine, holistic medicine, uh, TBT University, uh, we really look for the primary problem, um, which is often not the one that is screaming at you. It's not the super itchy spot. It's not the uh, swollen and red spot. Um, I often tell the story, and I'll repeat it, of my friend Harriet. So she's a horse trainer. She rode six, eight horses a day, and uh, she had a really painful knee. Swollen, red, couldn't really bend it very well. She, I'd often see her, because um, I worked on the horses across from the cross ties to her office. So I could see her in there, and every time she'd ride and someone was tagging up the next horse, she'd be sitting down, putting her her, her leg up on the desk with an ice pack. I'm like, oh my gosh, Harriet, what is going on? Is your knee still sore? She's like, yeah. So I'm taking so much ibuprofen and icing all the time. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, have you gone to the doctor? She's like, no. Not, not that I blame her, okay? But still, she hadn't gone, and this was going on for six months, and she's, you know, so sore and swollen and red. At that point, you might need an x-ray or something. Long story short, she finally went to the doctor, guys guess what? Her hip was actually the problem. Her hip was just bone on bone. She said no cartilage left at all. She needed a hip replacement. And I was like, what? What happened? What? What? But your knee? <laughs> She's like, I know. She said, the doctor said there's actually nothing wrong with her knee. It was just getting so severely overused because her body was kind of freezing the hip area like immobilizing it with the muscles and just not letting it move because the hip would be so painful because it was bone on bone so to try to ride without moving your hip you really overuse your knee so that's what happened she actually had a hip replacement and thought oh my gosh this is phenomenal her knee pain was gone the swelling went away uh, within a week and, and I'm like, you're back riding now <laughs> with your hip replacements like two weeks later. It was crazy. She's like, yeah, I feel great. This is amazing. So that's my story where I, it really opened my eyes, too, of saying, oh, my gosh, it's not the knee, which is swollen and red and painful. Um, and, yeah, everything she was doing was fine. Certainly icing to help the knee. That's needed. But why? Why, why, why was it uh, that swollen? And so she eventually found out, which was great. So I'd like to encourage you that you can take, um, or no, not responsibility exactly, but it be enabled to help your own horse. Because I feel like a lot of times it's, like I said, the information is so overwhelming when you're trying to figure something out that a lot of times it's very tempting to say, okay, something's wrong with my horse. Oh my gosh, what do I do? And then, okay, I know, I know. I'll ask the trainer. They'll know. They have a lot more experience than me. Oh, wait, wait. No, no. Let me also ask my friend who has had 20 horses. Perfect. What about the fair? The fair sees hundreds of horses. Okay. And then you finally call the vet. So what's happened is you're getting just mounds of more information. And it actually kind of, uh, I think they call it analysis paralysis, where too much information and it gets overwhelming and scary to make any kind of decision. So... I do want to encourage you, you can start by learning the, what I call TBT body checkups. It's just little movements to check every joint in your horse. Those are in my book, Where Does My Horse Hurt? They're really easy. Like, for example, for the, the knee, you just pick up the leg and you move the knee. <laughs> and so you flex it. And um, the knee, actually, the cannon bone should come all the way up and touch the forearm. Okay, and if it doesn't, you don't have full range of motion. That just lets you know what your horse is normal. Maybe the horse has a knee problem. Maybe it uh, might be an older horse, maybe with some arthritis. But you need to know what's your horse is normal. So all you got to do is learn your horse is normal on all these checkups. And then you'll be able to tell whenever a problem might present itself what's really going on. Because like I said, you might be thinking, oh, it's got to be the screaming swollen part which certainly needs to be treated, but why is it swelling and screaming? It can always be some mysterious other answer. Okay, guys, so that's pretty much about it. That's just wanting to encourage you to um, be uh, empowered to help your own horse and realize that vets aren't trying to get this wrong. 
and I'm a veterinarian, so I'm not dogging vets at all, but there's just so much information that everyone's kind of a specialist. And what we really need to do is step back and take a really good look at the big picture. So that's all for now. If you're looking for me, I am at uh, tuckerbiokinetic.com. And also we have a website, wheredoesmyhorsehurt.com for more information for horses. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.